Massey and you're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. Today we are here with Dane Massey from Dundalk Football Club. Um, so thanks for coming in, Dane. No problem. We're just going to ask him a couple of questions and um, go from there. Yeah. So anyway, um, at, you were playing for Bray, obviously when you started your career, five years. Um, how do you feel about the current situation there, uh, with all that's gone on this season and kind of the way they're going now? Yeah, they had they had a great start. Um, Harry Kenny's done a fantastic job there with with his squad. He's a good squad of players there. Um, Kenny McCabe got off to a floor. He's yeah, scoring he goals every score. week. Yeah, up so, there with Sean McGuire. Yeah, he was flying. Really was. Um, and they got off to a great start. They were up there in the league table. I think they were second at one stage. And um, obviously over the summer then with the committee, it didn't look great. And um, obviously the funds then disappeared kind of, and it wasn't great there's a lot of good people up there from my time anyway um, it's a very close-knit club and it's a it's really community based you know yeah it's a very family family orientated club as well so um, it was sad to see they were probably having their best run in years and, and then it was a bit of a bizarre time yeah yeah it really was yeah and there was crazy statements coming from the committee and there was a lot of players didn't know where they stood really and it was kind of in lim- limbo really so um, yeah, it wasn't great to see for the league overall either that such a such a great club doing really well over the past few years, staying up and great nights in the Carlisle ground. It's a good yeah. save. I mean, I don't think anyone goes there and doesn't enjoy a night there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it is. It's great. It's down by the seaside. There's lots of bars there for the fans, and there's always a great atmosphere at the, at, at the grounds. You know, it's probably one of my favorite grounds to play in the League of Ireland. Absolutely. Do you, do you think they, they can they can bounce back from? Obviously, Harry Kenny's going to leave at the end of the season, but. Do you think they're going to go full fold or do you think that they can... Uh, hopefully they can stay up. Net, yeah, safety hopefully net. they can. I heard there that their main sponsors pulled out, which isn't a great sign, but I'm sure someone else will jump in. They've a, they've a great fan base there as well. You know, There's a lot of good people in the club which will do their best to make it survive. So um, hopefully, yeah, they do. They keep up. Yeah, and obviously um, you've been playing with the Rovers futsal team as well as the Ireland national team and you, you represented Ireland. For three diff- uh, separate UEFA tournaments, yeah. which are actually with your brother, wasn't it? Yeah, Lloyd. Yeah, yeah. Lloyd. Played How was that? Like, as a sense of pride, obviously, with your brother and stuff like that, and you're re- representing your country. Yeah, uh, it was brilliant. Actually, yeah, it was a great experience. Um, the Electricity League brought in a competition between all the the clubs, and uh, it was kind of like it was new to Irish football. You know, futsal, indoor, five side, and. Um, Lucky enough, we played for a great Rovers team with Gary McCabe, Kieran Kilduff, and we went on to win the tournament. And they they formed an Irish team out of them. We travelled all over Europe, like it's in Spain and Portugal. They have full time leagues. Yeah. They're playing against like magicians with their feet. Really, like it, the the pace of the game was lightning fast, and it's roll on, roll off. So like at two minutes on, and you're absolutely gasping for a breath. Yeah. So yeah, it was a great experience, and obviously Lloyd played as well, and. Lloyd was a defender, he's a big he's a big bloke, he's much bigger than me, but uh yeah, no, he scored against the English here in the qualifiers and it was probably one of the one of his highlights playing oh, football. Big time, yeah. yeah. How, how did you feel uh, that like as a football player did it improve your skills a lot more? Oh yeah, without a doubt, you have to be fast or fast off the mark, your your feet have to be quick and like you're getting in tight areas and it's a lot kinda of like one v ones, you get past your defender, you're you're true on goal. So in that terms he got great confidence from me, you know dribbling with the ball at pace and yeah so without, without a doubt it helped my um, my football and ability and development yeah. yeah and my development yeah without yeah. a doubt yeah alright and then um, well, obviously after after Bray you got your move then to Dundalk I was obviously talking about going to Bowes how influential was Stephen Kenny in you going to Dundalk yeah well I obviously had five great years at um, Bray it was with Pat Devlin and Eddie Gormley there and like every year we were fine to stay up and it was really enjoyable my time there but um I think it was a it was time for me to go, and um, I had a couple of offers that year, and Stephen Kenny rang me, and he actually just he was made manager of Dundalk, who had finished last second last in the league, and they just won the relegation playoff, so it was a risk, and he was trying to he was trying to sign players, and he kind of put a mixed squad together, like the likes of Richie Towell, Andy Boyle, a lot of players that had been with, like Richie signed from Bluebell, Andy Boyle yeah. signed from Shelburne, and myself from Bray. And, it was kind of a mixed squad and I think we finished second that year we pushed Pats for the title and I think um Did you did you find that like very complimentary someone of of, of Stephen's success? 
would actually come out of his way to actually call you. Yeah, we always admire Stephen as a manager. Um, he managed some great Derry City squads like James McLean played under him. And I always remember playing Stephen. Any of his teams, he'd always be shouting on the line and encouraging his teams to play football and play the road the right way instead of like if they're losing panic and just going we won and I always admired him for that and I always helped well I always thought he could help my career along and thankfully he did yeah he seems to have done that anyway do you, do you think that, does there, that there'll ever be a point in the future that he may get a look in or, or even be on the short list for, for being a candidate to take over from Martin O'Neill in the future yeah I think it's a, it's a possibility definitely um He's took Dundalk and I think he's took Irish football to another level. Um, like the likes of us last year competing in Champions League and getting realistically one game away from getting into the group stages yeah. of the Champions League. And then we're falling back into the Europa League for Irish football. That was massive. And we weren't just like we weren't just arriving and getting hammered. We were really competing. Like We, we beat Maccabi and Tala. We were running. We ran. Well. Yeah, we exactly. Yeah, they one of the great nights, and we ran. And always uh, assist in that game, didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> we ran Zenit close as well. So it was great to be challenging these top teams in Europe. Yeah, and obviously you you played in all, all six of the games. You played every minute of it. Mm. Um, how 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 did you find it? Like, how was the style compared to the League of Ireland? How how was well, how was the difference there? Um, was there a difference? Yeah, there was a considerable difference um, in Europe. The football, it's kind of like um, the build up's much slower. But when you're on it, when when they attack it, like it happens 100 miles an hour. So, like, they build up from the back slow, 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 and then they just go quick into the centre force feet, and then you'll have three, four runners off. So, it's all about keeping your concentration. And ideally, like, realistically, um, set piece boys, Zena, I think Zena were the best team we, we played. And, like, we have a corner. And if their keeper caught it, like I think there was like six, seven players just gone. It was like a sprinting race to our box, and yeah. like the quality that they had, yeah, it yeah. was crazy. Was that like, was that something that I say Stephen worked on with you, with you guys in training? You know, obviously with the build up to the game and whatever. Is that something he worked on? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, we worked on. Well, obviously, we knew our strengths. Like we had good players. Like we had Horgs there. We had Patrick McIlhenny, Ronan Finn, all great going forward. So we played to our strengths. We tried to keep possession of the ball because we knew if we'd lose it. We wouldn't get it back for a long period of time. So um, yeah, so when we had it, we try and keep it for as long as we could, build it up, and then um, we try and get down the flanks and get plenty of crosses into the box. And uh, looking back in hindsight, it worked. Yeah, and you seem to to build up like a very effective partnership with uh, Hogs, obviously. Um, Daryl, um, I I envious at all of, of him. He's getting his, his chance now. He's in pretty much every Ireland squad now. Yeah, it's fantastic to see Daryl and Andy Boyle. They, yeah. they both got a great move over to Preston and shortly after the move, they were in the Irish setup. But no, I wouldn't say I'm envious. I'm absolutely delighted. I've trained with them every day. I've trained with the pair of them. Um, I think the difference was that they were consistent every week. Um, they were 8, 9 out of 10 every week. Whereas like other wingers were playing one good game, two two games then and then they'd have another good game you know whereas yeah. these two boys were consistent every week and do, 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 do you think it's a bit harder as a defender to get noticed as much because obviously there was a lot of talk of like obviously your form that year and Martin O'Neill was apparently looking at you and did, did, that, did that ever play in your mind when you were playing in, in games uh, it's, it's, nah, you can't really say that it's, it's, a, it's a huge like it's, it's a massive compliment to the Irish manager and Roy Keane, a player that I used to watch on TV, coming to watch you play football, and uh, you're serious. They're considering you for the Irish team, and um, we really enjoyed that period. It was probably it was a great year, great year for the club and the team. Um, so I just kept playing my own game, and realistically, like was Man O'Neill ever going to pick a League of Ireland player? And you look at the likes of uh, Daryl Horgan and Andy Boyle. They go over to Preston. And Sean McGuire, yeah, you know. Shawnee McGuire, prime example. Two, three months over there, and they're straight into the Irish team. So hopefully, maybe one day down the future, he might call someone up from the League of Ireland, yeah, or even for a couple of friendlies, just to get that that big experience and see how they do. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah, so why not? Like, it's not going to do any harm. Have a look at a few players. I think you'd be pleasantly surprised at the quality of the League of Ireland players. Like there is talent there. Absolutely, you've chosen the current squad that we have. Like the amount of ex League of ex League of Ireland players that we have in the squad now, yeah. compared to all that times, you know, it shows that the league is 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 growing in quality. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like you're looking at um, you're looking at young kids coming out of school and they're going over to England and it's they're having a hard time of it. 
and then they're coming home and they absolutely hate the game and they don't want to play. You look at Andy Boyle, Daryl Hall and all home players never went away and you just, the fruits now, like they're playing in England and they're playing for the Irish. So, um, how, how did you find, um, like, did you find a, a massive improvement in your game when you went, obviously went from part-time to full-time? Did you find a massive improvement? Uh, training, for, training from Tuesday, Thursday, match Friday, from going to that to going full-time every day. So, um, yeah, it was a big difference. Um, I think physically, like we were doing gym in the morning and then training in the evenings. We have a great backroom team there. There's Graham Byrne, Fergal Cairn and Sam Rice. who do absolute wonders with the lads, you know. Um, so yeah, I think the main part was just physically getting your, your body able and fit for the long season ahead. So pre-season is t- probably the toughest pre-season I'll probably ever do, you know. Dundalk's pre-season is probably famous. But um, yeah, it's really, really tough, yeah. Yeah, and did now... How how do you feel like you're gonna finish the end of the season? Obviously, you got a fantastic result against Rovers there in the, in the cup. Um, do you feel like he's a, he's a confident going in now for the final? Yeah, obviously we played the uh, Rovers there um, Tuesday night. It was a great you game. You seem to have a habit scoring against them as well. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that is. Uh, yeah, obviously the semi final was a great result there. It went to extra time. We've we've a lot of injuries now throughout our squad, um, but hopefully to be back in the next week or two. So yeah, it was a great, it was a great feeling, you know. With that bit of extra quality, I think in extra time that came to the top. Like you look at Stephen O'Donnell scoring that header, like he played a huge role that night, a real captain's role. Yeah, there was killings on the sideline at one stage, you know, and it kind of, it kind of just it made the atmosphere in the ground that bit more tense and like it could have been just a, a real one kind of game after that. But you look at the two goals that we scored to win the game, like Shane Grimes getting down the left wing, crossing it in. And, Anything in the box, Dave, will just latch on to. And I think anything he touches at this stage is going in the net. Absolutely. And then for Stephen O'Donnell, where he's at like in his career, where he's played, and to find the energy to make that person run past the, the back back four was fantastic. And he, what a Probably header. Probably from your pre-season training. <laughs> yeah, there you go, yeah. So like to score a header the way he did, I was delighted for him, you know, after Absolutely. what happened there. And yes, yeah, so we're in the final now against Cork for the third year in a row. Um, yeah, it was going to be Are you a tough quietly game. optimistic? Yeah, no, it's going to be a great game. You know, this rivalry now of the last three years, obviously, we won the last three league titles and it looks like they're going to win this year's. Um, so it's really going to make for a great final, I think, and um, hopefully it will be, and hopefully it turns out in our favour. Absolutely. I, I was going to say, like, for, for the people watching at home, it's it should be a game that the uh, fans should go out because they've seen the likes of. Uh, to Dogs players going over and getting a getting yeah. call ups to squad and and, and, and Sean and McGuire. So it actually could be the potential of seeing a future Ireland uh, player actually playing this so it would encourage more people to get go and get to these games. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Especially a four it's, it's the two best teams, more likelihood of people going there, you know? Yeah, the final of the FUE uh, Cup is is a kind of a League of Ireland day like I think of every fan goes to their game and I don't think it matters what teams in the final it's just to show the support of the league on that day is is great but uh, yeah look as you said there, there's great talent in both squads there look we have Patrick McElhenney he's ripping it up at the minute you have Michael Duffy on the wings and there's a few Cork boys in there as well Like so there, if the quality be there it'll be a good standard it'll hopefully be a good game yeah absolutely now, I know you're saying about you know you're playing in Europe but like as well as that, the fans from all sorts of coming to support you. Know, did we? Did you? Did you feel proud? Of the fact that you were representing, but you were representing just the towns and Dock. You were basically representing the whole of Ireland, basically. Yeah, it was it was great. Like we were, we were walking out into to the warm up, and you're looking at probably about two, three thousand people already sitting in their seats, seats waiting for the game to kick off. And you're looking around the crowd, and you can see Galway, Bohemians, Jackets, Rovers, and you're getting messages from from all different managers, past managers, and it was just great, Like, and everyone's wishing you well, because they yeah. all want the, the league to do well, and it's important that we all row in behind each other, and push push ourselves and each other in the right direction, really. kind of reminds me of uh, when Shells got into Europe, yeah. and everyone from all sorts of different even they went down to Lansdowne, and they all started um, supporting Shells, you know, just yeah, wishing exactly. them well, yeah, and in their bowls jersey. I actually kind of prefer the fact that they go in their actual colours, just to show support for the league. Yeah, it's great to see, and it it, uh, it shows like that, 
the, the league has followers and they're loyal supporters to their clubs, but they're not afraid to show support to other clubs doing well in Europe, which is important as well because it's just raising the standard of the league Absolutely. and the profile. Absolutely. Um, well, I just have a couple of fan questions yeah. just to ask you, just to kind of finish off on that, if that's all right. Yeah, no problem. Um, so, I think... So, Owen Gaffney has asked, why do League of Ireland players not get called up unless they sign for English clubs, whether it be Premier League or lower league teams? Yeah, uh, that's the million pound question, isn't it? Um, it's the magic airplane, really, isn't it? When the they magic flight, yeah, as, exactly, as our yeah. man Steve says. So, just the players that I mentioned here tonight, like you look at Daryl Horgan, Andy Boyle, and Sean McGuire, as soon as they go over, um, they're called up to your team. But look, the quality's there. Everyone can see it that follows the League of Ireland. It doesn't happen overnight, you know. Um, so hopefully a few further down the line, someone will get a call up and break that that mould, really. And yeah. Hopefully it'll be a trend in the four coming years. Yeah, well, you, you do see the likes of Northern Ireland doing it, you know. Yeah. They're, bring, they're bringing in players not at not, not such a high level and, you know, bringing them through and getting results. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And it's, it's great to see that and... Michael O'Neill's done a great job up there and he has he has trust in these players that he's calling up and I think that's a it's a great vote of confidence for the Northern Ireland League. So um I think for Martin O'Neill to call up a League of Ireland player. It'd be a huge statement. Yeah, it would, yeah. And but it'd, it'd be, also be a big, huge statement for the for the league as well, in terms of say, look, there is quality. Yeah, exactly, look at a lot yeah. of players that got picked up here, there's obviously Seamus Coleman, mm. um, Shane Hall, Kevin, yeah. Kevin Doyle, all these players going back even still, you know, James Yeah, they all went over and done really, really well in England, they're in great contracts and like they started off in the League of Ireland. Absolutely, and it, it, it kind of showed as well in the Euros when they had that picture of all the lads in their former uh, team's jerseys. That's right, yeah. Seamus in his Sligo top and then um, Long obviously in his Cork top. And yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. Mailer, Quinn. Yeah. Well, sure, that number's it's only great to see Miller as well, Captain, in the Ireland yeah, exactly, in England yeah. as well. <laughs> so like the numbers only growing now with the new squads there like you'll have the three lads there as well so um, yeah so sure, hopefully they keep growing yeah absolutely so do you uh, got another set of uh, set of questions of uh, another person so Duane Crean has asked uh, who was your toughest opponent actually we'll go we'll, we'll go on a, t- uh, a, a two way with this so we'll go toughest opponent in the League of Ireland yeah. and your toughest opponent in Europe right. or, or, or ever if you like um, I'll go toughest opponent in Euro first. Um, he was he played the right winger for <laughs> I get stick for this, but he was the right winger for the Croat the Croatian team. Uh, has it split? Yeah. His name's Kowasi, and he's probably the fastest player I've ever seen on a football pitch. He was absolutely lying and and to be honest, like. Hajik were a great team and was our first year in Europe as a group. Yeah, we should look Everton to melt the past. Yeah, so um, we actually went over there and beat them that night. Uh, it was a great result for us, but uh, uh, your man Kowasi was absolutely lying and they just lob it in over the back four and he would be like a greyhound. He'd just go. So yeah, he'd probably be the toughest player we played against in okay. Europe. Yeah. And in, in the league? In the league. If um, you can pick one. If I could pick one, that's a tough one. Um, I oh, probably do you know what I, I can't. There's no. There's not one that comes. James McLean actually, he was probably one of the toughest ones I've come across. Apparently he's the fittest man ever. Yeah, he's like he takes pr- a lot of pride in his fitness. Like uh, he doesn't drink. Like he's a he's a great example to kids. Like coming up, his diet's his diet's brilliant. His doesn't drink as I said and uh, trains really really hard. Even at, off the field, he's training really hard. He's yeah, that was all that, Darren Fletcher came out was the one who came out and said that he's a fit man. Yeah, he's seen and he's played with the likes yeah. of Ronaldo Rooney and all these types of guys. But yeah, it doesn't surprise me. He was like that uh, at Derry as well. Um, I've heard a couple of stories from the Derry boys like um, Patrick McLenny and Michael Duffy. He, he's fitness crazy, so which is good as well. And his all round game, like he's strong in the air, he's hungry in the challenges, like and he's good on the ball, which is. Can be a bit too hungry at times for Ireland. Yeah, well, look, when you're playing for your country, I'm sure all these emotions come up, and I'm That's sure, true, yeah. I'm sure he's a, uh, I'm sure James McLean, James McLean and Kowasi. Yeah, no. is that how you pronounce it? Kowasi, yeah, Kowasi, yeah. Okay. I think he's playing in China now under uh, oh, Sven sure. Gorn. There you go, there you go, millionaire now. Yeah. Um. So, um. Again, same person, but he just uh, has a a few questions. So, what do you think your best attribute is? My best attribute, um, I love getting forward. 
Um, I think attacking would be probably one of my... Bombing on. Yeah, bombing on from left back. Um, and Stephen Kenny always encourages me to get on. And to be honest with you, some games I come off the pitch and he does give out to me for not getting on forward enough, you know, which is great for me to hear. I got a manager there telling me to get on, get up the pitch. Who who who, who would have been your idol growing up? Uh, Roberto Carlos ah, as a fullback. He was an absolute, yeah, an absolute powerhouse. Took free kicks, coming from deep. Um, but in today's game, we we'll love watching Marcelo. Like he's it's quality. Yeah, it's it's crazy to watch the him. Champions like, League, the extra time, bombing all. Yeah, like it's like he has a free role at left four, which is which is madness. Yeah. But um. Obviously, look, he's world class. Like some of the balls that he plays on the half volley, he out, switches it out to the right wing. It's, it's an absolute. Oh, he's on a different. Level. Yeah, he's different. He's crazy, but um, his feet are fantastic as well, and he is. He's great. So to would watch. you would you would you study him? Like would you study his game? Yeah, look, he's electric. Like his pace is frightening as well. But like you look at like the standard of his cross is like he's very very seldom hits a bad cross in. So like how hard does he work off the pitch? Training on his crosses yeah. and his passing sublime. So yeah, look, I'm sure he works hard on it as well. Yeah, and the, the there's just a kind of last couple of ones here. So, um, what attribute of another player would you like to have if you could have one? Oh, uh, as I mentioned, Marcelo there, but he has grey hair, so it'll probably his hair. <laughs> oh yes. Um, attribute. Uh, would you tie it back if you had it? <laughs> yeah, it looks well, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, probably. You like Asim Mikato. Yeah, Kawasi's pace. I'd love fuck, if I'd pace like that. You'd be, uh, I think, you'd be a millionaire no matter what sport you're in. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. So do you have? Um, and then he says, uh, "Can you have your shirt? Can you have my shirt? Yeah, yeah no problem. Yeah, I'll sort it. I'll train on top or something from." There you go, Duane. Now we got your shirt. He does a uh, the boot room for Ireland, so he has a lot of uh, Irish oh, like, memorabilia and stuff like that. Too, yeah, yeah, I'll sort it. I'll top from. No you problem. might even check out your page. <laughs> Um, well, Dan, thanks very much for coming on. No problem, Appreciate Paul. that. No um, guys, if there's any other players you would like to guess from the League of Ireland, uh, let us know and we'll try and get in touch with them and try and get them in. Guys like Dan, come in. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV.